morning, Teresa DeCanio. Good morning, Peg. And uh, it took a couple promptings, but thank you so much for your willingness to share your story. This is important for our history and our congregation that uh, the sisters share as much as they choose to in their story and how they got here and important people and ministries that had an impact on you and you impacted them and the ministry impacted you. So let's begin with uh, where you originally are from. I'm originally from Chicago. Oh, of course. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. That's nice. And whereabouts in Chicago? Um, for a while, we lived in an apartment on the, uh, I thought it was kind of west side, but we bought, a, we bought a home on the south side in St. Killian's Parish. Okay, okay. And that's how we identify where we lived, by the parishes. That's correct. Right? In our era. And St. Killian's was uh, a parish where the school was dominated by the Adrian Dominicans. Dominated. Well, I went to public school through the first five grades. Oh, really? But I had this magnificent nun for CCD. Who? Sister Marie Corrine. She's not with us any longer. Okay. But she was marvelous. So I asked my what father. What made her marvelous? Her smile. Okay. She was gentle. She was caring. Um, so after contact with her in the CCD, I asked my father why I couldn't go to Catholic school. He said, take your mother and, this is what Catholic men always do, uh -huh. take your mother and go and do this. <laughs> so then you, there's no reason you couldn't have been there, take your mother. So we went over to the convent and we, we were told, and again it was recurring, we were told that whatever tuition we could pay, we paid. Otherwise, you send this child to this school to, for sixth grade. Wow, what a gift. Generosity. It was, mm -hmm. it was just, so I went to sixth, seventh, and eighth grade at St. Killian's with the Adrian Dominican sisters. Wonderful. Now, what, didn't you have siblings, brothers and sisters? Yes, I have a brother who's three years younger than I, mm -hmm. and a sister who's eight years younger. Oh. I call her my little sister. She doesn't uh, respond anymore to that <laughs> at 80. <laughs> she could be younger. She yeah. was like that. I guess yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah. Now, did they all go to Killian's Inn once you went? Yes. When they were old enough? They all, yeah. And, and we all, therefore, then went on to Catholic high schools. Wow. And back in those days... The tuition wasn't that much, oh, but it was no. a lot for that time. But again, uh -huh. I think at Aquinas it was, I don't know, $100 a year or something. Yeah. Can you imagine yeah. high school education yeah. for that little? Mm -hmm. Anyhow, then I did go to Aquinas. But it was a 45-minute travel on public transportation for mm -hmm. me. My father wanted me to go to the academy where the Notre Dame sisters taught. They had a good reputation. And I said, no, I want to go where the Adrians are, Dad. And Dad said? He said, if you want to do that, you go ahead. Mm -hmm. And I did it. Mm -hmm. And it was, I don't know where the decision came from, but it was a blessing. Why did you want to stay with the Adrian Dominicans? There was something about them. That's always what we hear. What was it about them? There was something about them that was attractive. They were joyful. Mm -hmm. They were caring. Um, and there were a lot of younger ones on the staff at Aquinas when I got there. And they were... That's all we had back then was yeah. younger, <laughs> younger ones. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who My, in particular perhaps made uh, you know the an one impression who, besides the, Marie Corrine? The mm -hmm. one who was there and made a difference and you never is Sister Frances Gerald Broderick. She's been dead for years. But she was, she was good. She was really good. Sister Marie Bride Walsh yes. was on the staff. I never had her for class. You know, she teases me now. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, she's a gift. She's a special person. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There so was... you decided to enter. When, how, what happened around that decision? What prompted that? Or who prompted it, maybe? I don't know. I spent one, I spent the, 
Immaculate Conception of my senior year in St. Killian Church praying for this, that I would make the right decision because I had this feeling. I always wanted to teach. Well, that's good. And this coming together of teaching and the Adrian Dominican congregation was a perfect fit. But I told my mother that I wanted to be a nun. And she broke down immediately. She always wanted to be a nun, but felt she wasn't worthy. Oh my. My mother. She never shared that with you? Not before, before this. Not before. And she cried and cried and cried. She didn't want me to go. She didn't? No. My father was the first one to say, honey, you have to let her go if this is what she wants. My father said, take, a, take another year. I'll even send you abroad to study if you'd like to. I said, Dad, I don't want to do that. I want to go now. So I graduated early June of 1948 and entered three weeks later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is my 70th year wow. as an Adrian Dominican. What a blessing. Mm -hmm. Blessing for you and a blessing for us and a blessing I don't for know. all those. It sure was a blessing for me. Well, <laughs> you know you've been a blessing and I hope you know you've been a blessing in the congregation. You've been a blessing in the ministries that you have been about. So you entered in 1948. 48, June of 1948. Okay. And then you came to Adrian, but I'm sure some other people from Aquinas were here. Ten of us entered yeah. that year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they all kind of thought they were... <laughs> Not all of us remained, but... No, still. No. They had a nice... Aquinas location. has a lot of... Uh, they generate a lot of vocations. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Lots of young, joyful <laughs> What happened uh, once you left Adrian, the formation program, and you went out to ministry? My first mission of significance was a full year's term at Precious Blood in Detroit with Sister Leonida. Oh. Mm -hmm. She was a marvelous educator. Did you teach first grade? Yes. Because that, that was her. But there were, there were three of each grade that, if you can believe yeah, it. Yeah, I can. And uh -huh. she said to me, when the, she said, kid, you're going to teach first grade. There were two sisters who were more mature, and, and so I could work with them, and it was wonderful. But I only was there a couple years, unfortunately. But with some great educators who helped you to, you know, improve your teaching. L Leonida uh, was one of the best. Uh -huh. Marg Hines. Oh, my. Because I went to Iron Mountain and worked there for a number of years. And then I really believe, Peg, that my time, my final 30 years in ministry was at a Jesuit co-ed high school, and it was a blessing. And where was that? St. Ignatius College Prep in the city of Chicago. What made it? What is there something in particular that made it a Well, what made it is by that time I had an advanced degree in history and economics. And I could introduce those courses there and teach them. And there are very high level students there. Um, and there are many of them that keeps telling the president there that the change I made in their lives. Oh, isn't that touching? Yeah. I didn't, the, the course did. <laughs> now, I doubt that. Anyone can teach the course, but if it had an impact on someone, there was more to it than just the course. Well, I, I was you... very happy in the classroom. So that was evident. That was teaching. my only ministry mm -hmm. for all the time I was an Adrian Dominican. Is teaching. Preaching. Teaching. And that's preaching. Well, uh, that, yeah. I, I am a preacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am a preacher. What is it, humbly to say, what is it that you feel made you that special teacher? My dad. And what was it about your dad? My dad said to me, I remember when I said I wanted to enter the Adrians. Now, this is interesting. Don't ask me how I knew this, Peg. He said, you know, honey, that's an Adrian, an, an Irish-dominated congregation. Where do you think you're going to go? An Irish-dominated? How he knew that, what he, how he felt that, I don't know. I said, Dad, where do I want to go? And he just looked at me. And he said, you will do whatever you want to do. And you will do it well. My father also was the head in our family, but my mother was the heart. 
and they mm -hmm. blended together beautifully. Mm -hmm. Canio. Yes. What is that? Italian. 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 Both yeah. sides of the family. Oh, okay. So he did. He had some feelings about, <laughs> about the Irish. <laughs> Well, the, my sister was married to an Irishman. He's now deceased. Uh -huh. Murphy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it was that encouragement that you hear your dad saying that, you know, you know what you want to do. And I think do that it. He, he, he made me feel that if I gave everything I could, I could do anything I wanted to do and become anything I wanted to become. I never focused on that. No. But that was always in inside me intuitive right and part of you yeah uh -huh. and he gave you that spirit yes was there any time that that you had a call on it on that that spirit that he kept encouraging you because you're having some challenges or because life hasn't been all well right now is my biggest challenge peg yeah being here mm -hmm. it wasn't my choice mm -hmm. i was told i had to come because mm -hmm. of health conditions yeah you know yeah. and and my my health condition is getting worse. So has that changed your feeling about being here? No. <laughs> Must you be so honest? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back to some of those uh, other uh, experiences you had in your various ministries, which was all teaching. All right. It was you, all teaching. It was all teaching, and you especially liked your last ministry where you yeah. spent so many I years. I also had a very significant, I, I, sorry that I missed this, a significant time at our a high school in Rockford, Muldoon High School. Right. I was there when they closed it. How, how hard. Broke my heart. Yeah. And it broke my heart to watch. And he's an, she's another gal, another woman, who had great impact on my life, and that was Catherine Patrick. Okay. I don't know if you knew her. Yes, I knew her. I knew who she was. Uh -huh. She never thought about anything but herself. Mm -hmm. I mean, her... I, of others. Others. Of others, She right. never, never, you know, I used to say, she was a principal, assigned principal, and she really was an, a counselor. I used to say to her, you're counseling those kids. Who's running the school? It's taking care of itself, Therese. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Probably because all the faculties, she That's was right. so good with the That's faculty, right. so there were no problems. And then we, because... Uh, they closed Muldoon. We were the first ones on open placement. I remember Georgina calling and saying, you can go any place you'd like to go. And where'd you go? I went to um, Montini High School right, in Lombard, okay. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a school run by the Christian Brothers. I, en I, had, I enjoyed it there, too. Mm -hmm. And they enjoyed you. I think, so I hope so. Was it co-ed? Yes. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, and I was the chair of the social studies department there, too. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean, chair of the social studies department? What does that mean to be chair of the social studies department? It means that you're responsible for what goes on in the social studies classrooms, and you have to mm -hmm. visit mm -hmm. the uh, classrooms of the uh, teachers. You have to meet with them after you do a visitation. Okay. And okay. I don't care for that position myself, <laughs> uh -huh. but you do it. So when did you let go of your teaching? 2010. Okay, and you let go of that health reasons, or you? Yeah, just I was realized? I was part time for a number of years yeah. before that, yeah. and that was another blessing. The Jesuits said, "Whatever you want to do, you can do here." So they arranged that I could go part time. Oh, that's great. That's great. So you kind of eased out of the full time into the part time. Yeah. And we're very effective in that. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> great. So then um, you just made a decision, or no, the decision was made for you to come here, which now you think has been a good decision. <laughs> it was a really, it, it was, was a necessary, necessary decision. decision, right? Right. Where where were you before? I was living in, in a, we had a, the house we have in Westchester. Oh, right. That's, that's where right. I lived. That's right. That's right. Yes. And you originally lived with your very dear friend, Louise. Yeah. Mm hmm And that was a, I want to say a sudden loss. It was, it, it, I've lost two very dear friends. Uh -huh. You probably never knew Rosalia Hahn because no. she's been deceased for over 31 years. Yeah. She was a very dear friend. I met her at Muldoon. Okay. Okay. What made your friend so significant? 
What made them significant in my mind was how good they were, how much they paid attention to living the life the way they were called to. Mm -hmm. So they were an inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. And you to them. Oh, I doubt that, but anyhow. <laughs> You're putting yourself down. <laughs> no. You said that you are primarily a preacher, right? Okay. What do you think is the most effective form of preaching? It might depend on, <clears throat> on those you're relating to. Um, you can preach simply by being who you are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's, do you think that was your form of preaching? Yeah, because I don't, I'm not a, a constant talker. A uh -huh. lot of people talk, 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 talk. Or there are other people who buy their way into other people's lives. If I'm going to be in your life in a special way, it's because I appreciate who you are and you appreciate who I am. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. And that's one way of preaching. That's right. Mm -hmm. I never thought about it that way. But but all those years of teaching and the effect that you had on those students and the parents. Oh, yes. Do you yes. feel you had an effect? Absolutely. Affected the a parents? Absolutely. Anyone um, in particular that you recall? As far as parents are concerned? Yeah. Well, I, it, <clears throat> before I left Westchester, I had already... Um, retired, Sister Louise said, I'm, I'd like to start a prayer group in the parish. She said, would you like to join? I said, I don't know. <laughs> so I go along and we started that prayer, this prayer group with six or seven women. It went on and on. It was still going on when I left uh, Westchester. Uh, and those women were so grateful Mm -hmm. And they all wanted to know more about nuns. Mm -hmm. And some of them had gone to a Catholic school. but well, in, It's different, you know, like yeah, nuns like. You're yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So you do another form of preaching. Uh, it, the what, right. And they to you. That's correct. What was it? What was the one thing or I other think, thing? I yeah. think what they preached to me was the challenges you face in married life. Raising children today, how difficult that is, mm -hmm. and how much they wanted their children to... <gasps> Turn that off. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> oh, shoot. Oh, God. But they were, they were just marvelous Sorry. women, good women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was nice to be part of their program. Well, and it gave them some place to to stretch themselves as well. I don't That's know if, correct. They, if they worked out of the home, but sometimes the women that, you know, yeah. are constantly... They, and they were very good. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. very, very kind, you know. Uh -huh. Sometimes they'd make me a meal because Sister uh, Louise did most of the cooking. Uh -huh. I could I could starve. <laughs> <laughs> What's, as you look back on, on your life, What's a special blessing that you feel you have oh, received? Oh, my special blessing was my parents and my family. Uh -huh. There are no two ways about it. When I think about it now, <laughs> two weeks ago, I believe, it was two weeks ago, 60 Minutes had a session, and it talked about grandparents raising their grandchildren right. because the parents of those children were opioid addicted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when I think of the, of, of, of the sacrifices, my father worked nights. My mother cooked him a meal at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning every time he came home. Oh my. I mean, I guess that kind of sacrifice just rubs off on you. And preaching. And yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just, just unbelievable. So my, my greatest blessing in life was my family, mm -hmm. you know. Now, I don't know why, but my brother, who's three years younger than I, spent a couple years with, he went to Carmel, Mount Carmel in the city, 
and then went into... What was Mount Carmel? High school? Yes. Not a seminary? No, a but school. he did go into the seminary okay. for a while. And I'll never forget when he left. We used to come home from Adrian on a bus and get dumped off at Aquinas for a summer visit. Dumped off, okay. And the fir my first visit after he was out, I got off the bus and he said, here's a success in the family. I felt like two cents. Mm -hmm. I said, Joe, what do you mean? He said, well, I didn't make it. I said, well, there's a reason for that. I said, and Peg, I call him my Jesus walking. Mm. My brother is such a good man. He's now blind. My, my sister and two nieces are out there with him now in California. And you said he's not well. Uh -huh. Just not well. Mm -hmm. And I just, he's, he's a much better person than I. Mm -hmm. And so is my sister. I won't give that to my nieces, but. <laughs> They're going to watch this, you know. <laughs> they are going to watch this. <laughs> This, this uh, taping goes on YouTube. It was, is that yes, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So do you want to say something nice about this? <laughs> but anyway, they're out there with your brother right now. Pardon? They're out there with your brother. Yeah, I think right they're coming now. home tonight sometime. Yeah. yeah but I know just that, went weighs, to visit. that weighs heavy on you, and you, you call him frequently, you mentioned to me. Yeah, I talk yeah. to him regularly. Uh -huh. How uh -huh. you doing, Therese? <laughs> yeah. Do you have any regrets? with your few years of life that you've lived? You know, I don't believe I do, Peg. Oh, that's good, okay. I don't believe I do. Mm -hmm. I've been blessed. Mm -hmm. What do I have to regret? Mm -hmm. When I look around and see what some people live with and live through and the disadvantages they live with. Well, I took them all for granted. I thought that was the way things right, were. Right, until you reach out and see what other people. Yeah. What gets you out of bed in the morning these days? What gets you out of bed in the morning these days? <laughs> <laughs> I know today was different. You were excited. You were excited about coming here today. Oh, very so that, excited. So that got you out of bed. But other days? I just have to, I know I have to get out of bed to get, and go do what I have to do. And what's the doing? Get dressed, uh, say a few prayers, go just down. Just a few? Just a few. Okay. Because I, I can do more when I after breakfast. Right, okay. <laughs> so you eat upstairs here on the floor. In the solarium, yes. In the solarium, yes. so you don't have to travel. Okay. Yes. So that gives you, gets you up out of bed in the morning. That's right. Mm -hmm. How would you like to be remembered? I'd like to be remembered by someone who did what God wanted her to do. And I think you have to examine yourself every day to say, did I do it today? Did I do it today? And if, I just hope at the end of my time on this earth, Jesus can look down and say, yes, you did. And you feel he will. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you keep putting yourself down. I, you, you know you've been, you've been blessed and we've been blessed by your presence. You know, you know that. Don't you feel that? I do. Yeah. I do, but I, don't, I just don't think about that. No, I know you don't, <laughs> but, but uh, it is uh, important uh, that we think about that, that we have been. I think, you know what? We don't tell each other no. often enough sure. that that's the case, Peg. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but you know, until Va until Vatican II, we could hardly talk to each other. <laughs> Did Vatican II have an impact on you? Not really. Not really. Uh, not in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Okay. What What would? Well, I just was. I just did. I did not always accept or agree with some of the changes that were made. You wanted to keep that habit on. No, no. Not, not necessarily. Regarding the church. Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be the only change that I... <laughs> okay. You know, but some of the others... Thank you, Peggy. Well, well, I appreciate it. And well, thank, thank you, you, young man. Thank you again.